Hi everyone, David Maley here, and this is part three of our series on K-means clustering in R through R Studio. So what we're doing here in part three is we're actually going to graph and map this data. So we in part one we determined what the primary or the optimal clustering should be, and it was four for this data set. This data set, by the way, that we're using is the TKD data set for the month of July, and it's right here. Shows you month, state, city, store, sales, transactions, and units. I kind of went over this more in the first uh, video of the series. If you haven't watched yet, please go back and watch that. Um, so that's the data set that we're using. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually graph it, and you're going to come out with a map like this, which is really cool because it breaks down your clusters, and then it adds another variable called sales. Okay, I could have added in transactions. I could have added in, uh, you know, whatever I want, depending on the data set and what I have available. So in this data set, what we're going to do is we're going to first take and combine the city and state data into a single column. And the reason being is we have to have both city and state in that column to get the geographical data for that, to get the longitude and latitude through the geocode function. So what you can see here is I am taking what we have is city and we have state, right? In our data set, we've already seen that. So if we look at, uh, let's see here, we, have, we are going to end up with this, okay? But right now we don't have that. So we have city and we have uh, state. See that? But they're not in the same column. If they're not in the same column, it can still pull by city. But the problem is many cities, the names, could be in many different states or countries or whatever. So you could have Hazard, Kentucky. You could have Hazard, Tennessee. You could have Hazard, uh, who knows what, Wyoming. So it won't know. So you need to have both the city and the state together. So the end what we want to have in the end is we want to have this where it's combined together in one column as city comma state just like that so what we're doing here is we're taking from that test data six which is the vector the data frame that has city and has state that I just showed you and we're actually concatenating them with the paste function right here so it's paste with test data six with the column city and test data six with the column state and in between them we're putting a comma. That's how that works right there. And it puts it into locations df. And then what we're doing is we need to have it as a tibble, which is a slightly different, more advanced data frame than a regular data frame. It's got a couple extra little functions behind it. It needs to have, if you don't do that, it will not work. So you need to do this, tibble function of this data frame that you just did, created right here, okay, into itself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull with the geocode function, which is right here. This is going to get locations df. It's going to get the actual, this doesn't make sense, but your, the column name is locations df and the data frame is locations df. And we're going to get the geocode for that and it's going to put that into a new data frame that, to differentiate it called geodf, locations underscore geo underscore data frame. Okay, so we have a locations DF and a locations geo DF. This one will have just the uh, latitude and longitude once you run it. So I can click this and there it is. That's what's going to end up with just latitude, longitude. And what it's what we're going to do is we want to go and combine through a C bind this data frame with this data frame. So you can see right here, that's what we're doing right here. So I am C binding, which is column bind. I'm combining the locations df and the locations geo df into this same df map location. So now when I look at it, I will have everything I need in it. So if we pull that, there we go. We've got longitude, latitude, locations, sales, transactions, clusters. We've got everything we need in there. So next, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at and create a new column for sales, we can also, I'm showing you other ones here too, examples. So, what if I want to create a column for transactions or clusters? And basically, what you're going to do is take the sales data, okay, from test data six, and we're going to do it in an array back into sales in a tibble. And this will give us the data we want. And we put that into a new sales column, and it'll correctly put it in there for each of the locations. Next, 
after we've done that so the code is all right here you can you can copy and paste it whatever or, uh, you know type it in however you need to do it next I want to open this up a little bit because I've got some stuff kind of commented out here but I want to explain this to you so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group by sales so I can see the data and so what I want to do is I've got the sales column here right and I've got sales here what I'm doing is a if else and it can be a nested if else so I could have many different breakouts I could break it out by size one two three four eight whatever all the way up to however many I want now keep in mind as you go up the sales doubles as you can or the size doubles so you can see here the size differentiations and you you once you get to a certain point it's going to be such these dots or plots will be so big they're going to hide all the other plots so what I've done here is I just simplified it and I just have one or two is it greater than or less than 50,000 the sales and you can look at the data and see that the sales go between uh, zero and 98,000 or something like that. so they all fit in here um, I could have had more and I've shown you that here I've built it in here if you want to look at um, you know how to make a nested if else to use multiple uh, gyrations of this and then I even have it down here for cluster if I wanted to do that with clustering we're not going to use it here but I can do it by size I can also do it by color see that so I can have I can specify I want red pink purple blue whatever I want that's what's there next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I want to look at this data a little bit better and if I look at it sometimes when I run the geocode it'll miss mess up on a row or two or six and what I need to do is go and take that data and write it out so here's how to write it and we're using the right XLSX function okay and I write it out even if I haven't I don't have, what's great about this function is I don't even have to have created this Excel file as a backup so I'm using four here up here region four but I've changed it to a five just to differentiate it and uh, this writes it to it and what I can do is actually I can go in there and then I have to look up on the internet um, you know, hazard, Texas, longitude. Boom, and it'll give me the longitude and latitude and enter them in manually uh, for anything that gets missed. Usually it doesn't, but sometimes it does. If I do this on my home computer, it doesn't miss them or it misses one. On my uh, work computer, somehow it misses like five or six of them. So you want to check your data to look for the missing uh, pieces and fill them in. Um, it's not always perfect and it won't always fill them all in. It's usually pretty good though. So then I bring the data back if I had to change anything right here. I bring it back and I put it in this test data 7. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I take the size 1, okay, which is up here. And out of that data frame, I'm picking that column and I'm putting it into sales amount. It makes it a little easier to work with okay and then below that let's hit and enter to differentiate this here with a little space here I'm first gonna pull the map this is a map of that region so that area that we're looking at for this region 4 is the Kentucky and surrounding areas so I could have picked a different zoom angle but as you see these points go all the way out to the edges almost so that's a pretty good uh, uh, choice for zoom level. I could, if I pick seven, it's going to zoom it in a little bit more, and I might lose this dot over here. So that's what the zoom function will do. And I could zoom it out to a four, and then really look in on it. But I'll have a little area, and I won't be able to see the little dots for the smaller uh, sales amounts. So next, what we're doing? Let me open this up for you a little bit better. Let's see if we can see this better. There we go. That shows you the whole code for the GG map. Uh, function here. So once I've pulled the map, now I'm pulling ggmap, which we've lo we've loaded in as one of our libraries. If you haven't, please load that in. And ggplot has gm point. So if you don't have ggplot, bring that one in also in your library. And what we're going to do is this guy right here runs the aesthetics for longitude and latitude based off of what we've done already, what we've pre-built off of the df.map locations data frame which is right here data equals df.map.locations these don't have to necessarily be in this order I just find it easier to work with in this order but you could have this data equals df.map locations at the beginning and just before the x and y latitude if you want to or before color doesn't matter and then what we got is the color breakout as factor is clusters so that's what will be here it looks ugly right now because I had to shrink this to show you the uh, 
the uh, actual code we're using here. And then we got size equals sales amount. I could also, instead of using sales amount, just put the df.map underscore locations uh, dollar sign size one and put that in here. That would work the exact same way. And then we've got our title. So the title for this uh, map is going to be Kentucky Region 4 K Means Clustering. So let's bring that back. Once I've shown you that, you know how the code works there. I'm going to bring this back and make it look nice and pretty again. And let's see. Do, 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 do. Give it a few seconds here and it'll snap back and show it correctly. It does this once you go and shrink it and it takes it a few seconds to come back. Um, hopefully it comes back here shortly. And down here below while we're waiting for that, I want to show you when you run your map, sometimes they run into this thing where it says over query limit. Um, Google tends to do that if you run the map too many times and it won't pull back the data every time. So if it does that, wait a few minutes or an hour before you run it again. There it goes, it snapped back. If it keeps doing it, you have to run it the next day. But you can also, a way around it is, instead of picking Kentucky, I could have picked Tennessee. And then I'm pulling a different map. So I'm not pulling the exact same map and coordinates every single time. So here it is. Here's our nice looking map that we've done today through this. Let's bring it up, make it look nice and pretty here. And you, what's really neat about this is it breaks it out by color for factoring, which is our clusters. So you have a red, a greenish one, a blue one, and a purple one, right? And you can see throughout here the green ones are all the green ones are a little bit small. So that's kind of interesting that the green cluster is a very small sales cluster. The red cluster tends to be all big sales. The uh, blue cluster is a little bit of a mix. There's mostly big, larger ones, not as large as the red ones, except for this one and smaller ones and the purple one is more intermixed throughout here. The purple one is the larger uh, segment. We want to probably want to look further in this and figure out what makes these up. Is it sales or there could also be transaction driven uh, ideas in here too. So this is by sales, the size right here. I could have easily changed that back in the code to be transactions instead. So instead of using the uh, sales um, column, I could have used transactions and that would have given me transactions and what would be really neat is if you plotted both of those and then you know copied and pasted the the graph here from both against each other to look for insights on both and you probably see that there's a correlation between sales and transactions but there you know it, it would be interesting to see how it works out and where it is and it might be entirely different the transactions for the sales you might find that there's some locations that have high sales and high transactions and some that have high sales with low transactions which means they're selling higher uh, year-term memberships maybe and the other one's selling monthlies maybe or maybe one is selling a lot of uh, add-ons or clothes like uh, geese uh, taekwondo geese um, Taekwondo shirts, maybe. Uh, maybe they're selling a lot of kids' classes at certain locations, and the others are selling adult classes. Adult classes cost more than kids' classes, usually. Adults go throughout the week. Kids go usually one or two days a week, or sometimes in some locations, they only go once or twice a month. So that is how you look into and do a complete and thorough K means analysis. If you haven't watched parts one or two, please go and watch those because you need to know how to determine the optimal uh, uh, cluster size. If you don't do that, then you're just picking, you know, five, eight, three, whatever, and it may not be the optimal uh, cluster size or clustering or grouping or uh, segmentation of your customers or your data. So please go back and watch one and then watch two where you'll actually run the data run the k-means analysis and you'll actually be able to to append the cluster data and verify it that way you have it in your data set as I showed you earlier and then you can take that cluster data as we've done here and do some pretty cool stuff with it you can graph it you can plot it you can map it and this is the more advanced one where you map it and actually see your clusters on a map uh, zoomed into the right level so you can actually see and start pulling some insights from your data which is just really neat and cool to do, I think. And uh, this is very valuable in data science and data analysis to do this 
in projects, especially at the beginning part of a project where you want to go and segment your data and figure out what you want to do with it, what's out there, what is, what are the patterns looking like. This could be a complete data science project all by itself, doing customer segmentation or product segmentation or uh, you know state sales. Uh, it could be anything. Um, but this is very valuable and if you talk to data scientists they'll t and mention k-means clustering and you've gone through this a couple times with your data sets you know what you're doing they're gonna respect you and understand what you're talking about and be able to have a great conversation with you this is very helpful also if you're looking for a job in data science or data analysis you need to know how to do this this walks you through it from part A to part Z from part 1 to part 3 the complete and thorough k-means clustering analysis because now you know how to do customer segmentations now you know how to go and and do product segmentations and look at you know and find new and hidden insights that people may not have seen before and to look at your data in a new and interesting way you know it doesn't matter what the data is you can find all kinds of cool and interesting stuff I could take uh, flu uh, dispersing or you know like for instance it, transmission patterns or or disease uh, growth if there's a new emergent disease in Africa or in Asia or with the flu with the swine flu or the uh, the bird flu and we could go and track um, this is what the CDC does and numerous government agencies do um, we could go and look at crime patterns in New York City or Charlotte North Carolina or Chicago and see you know what the trends are are they going down or are they going up are they going down in certain sub you know sub uh, areas are they going up in certain in suburbs or in uh, uh, nearby cities you know is the economy playing an effect these are the questions that data scientists and data analysis analysts answer and look at every day and it's really interesting and cool to be able to look at your data this way so I hope you found this helpful this is a great uh, series go back and watch the other two and try this yourself take data that has city and state data in it and uh, you know there's plenty of data sets out there University of California Irving has a bunch of them uh, MIT has some there's there just look up Google data set examples or example data sets or or free data sets or something like that test data sets and then just go and play with the data find a data set that means something to you don't just pick any data set you know I have seen the ones for iris and you know butterflies and flowers and stuff if that interests you great go for it but maybe you want some with Papa John's or pizza and gun shops I saw one like that that was pretty funny that somebody did um, you can do all kinds of stuff there's all kinds of cool data out there engine parts supplies uh, furniture suppliers uh, you name it just find data that works for you that's interesting to you or take your own data if you work at a, a company and you've got your data analyst or a financial analyst and run it through just make sure before you go and publish your data or make a video of it or show people what you've done on the internet make sure you have your employers permission or that it's not a uh, uh, you know something private that should not go out there all right, thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please check out my channel for all the other great videos I got, I've got out there. Please go back and watch parts one and two of this series so you can go and you know, watch them as many times as you want. They're out there for you to, to look at. Try the uh, code. Plug your stuff in. And be sure and uh, subscribe and like so you can see all the other great stuff I've got coming out. And be sure and leave me some comments. I'd like to see how this worked for you. I'd like to see the data sets you guys are using. Please use other data sets and try various different things. Uh, you'll, you'll be amazed at what the insights are you can pull from a data set. It could be uh, airline traffic. It could be anything. So please have fun with it. Use this code. Go find some data sets to work with and learn K-means clustering and analysis. And... Uh, let me know how it goes for you. Thanks again. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.